thousand years ago or even beyond that if one asked us as to how would you identify this land this was a land of the seekers this was the land of spirituality and this was the land for enlightened beings this was the land of siddhis and sadhus so what does the, all this mean this means that this in this land knowledge is of the utmost priority possessing knowledge it was the greatest virtue and the ones in the responsibility of imparting knowledge or oh, it was the most pious responsibility that one could partake it was the most sacred duty and today ladies and gentlemen do we have the same responsibility when i say responsibility is knowledge in the same position as it used to be yes it is but this is where the question arises do we have the same access to knowledge or the procedure to attain the knowledge is it one and the same the question is it is actually a questionable aspect when we say that you know knowledge is the root of human progress the natural answer is education education is the way one can attain knowledge one can become knowledgeable in the society but today ladies and gentlemen i want to ask you all a question the education system that we are all accustomed to is it in its truest form second of all the education system that we are all accustomed to is it catering to the modern day needs question number 3 the education system is it helping us stay empowered and realize our highest potentials question number 4 is the education system that we are all accustomed to adequate enough to cater to a nation which is as vibrant dynamic progressive and technocratic as ourselves and in order to establish that education we don't merely need the education system that we are all acclimatized to today what we need is an intellectual awakening and how do we achieve that intellectual awakening first and foremost freedom second of all social development and third of all developing an attitude where we can stand up to the globe now this is where i want to start with my first segment freedom as bal gangadhar tilak quotes freedom is my birthright the great political philosopher j j russo in his seminal work social contract theory writes that man is born free that a man is born free but is bound by chain everywhere now this brings me to a small segment where i want to tell you let's just hypothetically imagine the tomorrow i walk into your house i acclimatize myself quite well then slowly i start telling you what you need to do in terms of what you need to eat how you need to dress up what should your hobbies be what should your activities be what should influence you what should not influence you etc etc naturally you'll ask me to get out the same thing with the education system today the education system is not teaching you what you deserve to learn but it is expecting you to learn certain things that the system want you to learn today what is happening is that as a member of the academy i'll tell you a lot of members of the academy tell us that all the answers that the students write are strongly influenced by chat gpt is influenced by wikipedia influenced by youtube lectures parents are complaining that you know my student is all or my child is always busy with the mobile phone always on laptop always addicted to the various gadgets that is at our peruse back in the day when technology or at least internet was in its nascent stages 
the primary source of information used to be those notes which were dictated to you by your teachers in your classrooms, the lectures, etc. and etc. But today, technology has taken that place, internet has taken that place. Back in the day, internet used to be of secondary, info, secondary use of information. That is, you were referring to internet and for all the materials that was available on internet, those used to be the secondary form of information. Today, as I already mentioned, the roles have reversed. D.V. Gundappa, the great Kannada poet, used to say, Guru vina gulama naguva tanaka doreya danna mukuti. Munde guri rabeko hinde guru rabeko mankuti ma. Which translates to, one has to be a guru's gulama. You have to be a guru's slave to attain salvation. In front of you, you need to have a name. You need to have an objective, you need to have a vision, you need to have a mission. And guiding you at the back end should be your guru who pushes you to achieve greater heights. But unfortunately today, a classroom has become a laboratory of textbook reading. Unfortunately today, a classroom has become a rat race for faculty members to just finish their syllabus. There is no room for experimental learning. And that is where we, the youth, need freedom. Freedom of thought, freedom of belief, freedom of expression, and freedom of faith. The second segment is societal development, a revolutionary way forward in terms of nation building. Now when I say that there is a need for a revolutionary path, for societal building, for nation building, what is that path? The world has been a witness to the rise and fall of closed markets. Globalization is the new era. Free market system is the new era. All the third world countries, India, has been the largest beneficiary of the free market system. We were 75 years ago, this was a nation which was one amongst the fragile five countries, remind you ladies and gentlemen. And today, we are one of the top four economies in the world, slowly closing in to become the third largest economy in the world. Now, what does that mean? What does that necessitate? It simply means that this is the era where knowledge is going to triumph. Back in the days, like around 100, 200, 300, 500 years ago, there was a need for an agrarian revolution. It was successful in establishing an agrarian society. Then a few hundred years ago came the industrial revolution. It established a industrial society. Today, what we need is a knowledge revolution. And that shall give rise to a knowledge society. And knowledge society is the way forward to achieve an intellectual awakening. And that is where the societal development takes shape. Standing up to the world order. Strength only respects strength. If you want to earn the respect of another counterpart who is strong, you have to be strong first. And how do we make ourselves strong? The answer lies as follows. What is the biggest challenge that is challenging our youth community today? According to me, it is brain drain. One may ask me why and how. It is simply because the youth of this country, despite being the youngest nation, despite being the nation with the world's largest youth population, we don't see a bright future in this country. It can be financial, economic, social, political, whatever be the reasons. You always depend on another country. You're waiting for an opportunity. You're waiting for your visa to board the plane and leave this country. Many years ago, that is like probably 75, 80 years ago, we were a wealth-seeking nation. Today, we have become a wealth-generating nation. For the next 25 years, what should our target be? On, a, on the similar lines, we should become a job-creating nation instead of a job-seeking nation. Now, how do we achieve this idea of becoming a job-generating nation? Two methods of learning. Objective learning, subjective learning. Now, what is this objective learning? 
one has to develop the mastery of understanding your theories understanding the dogmas and the most importantly staying up to date with current affairs this is objective learning subjective learning subjective learning is where you apply these dogmas and theories and practicalities into real life application remember that despite the fact that you are <clears throat> intelligent you are you know well to do with your books well to do with your syllabus well to do with all the things that your examination expects you to be or ex examination expects you to study if you are not able to apply it in your real life scenario it is of no use everything is in vain so this is where the power of idea comes into picture few minutes ago i was talking about how classroom has become a mere laboratory of just reading the textbook and finishing the syllabus but not a center of learning exchanging views and debating from the words of great dr h narsim maya the legendary principal of national college bengaluru he used to say prashnisade yenannu oppabedi without questioning do not accept anything for free that should be the mindset of every student that should be the attitude of every student teacher bandru teacher came in gave delivered the lecture you just listen you nod your heads no question do not accept anything for free and now what does that result you in it results in power of an idea now what is this idea what is this power of an idea why do we need an idea from the words of victor hugo nothing in this world is as powerful as an idea whose time has come when it is your time when your time comes in nothing can be more powerful mere lexicon or a dictionary meaning of the term idea is nothing but a way of expressing with a combination of words wherein you reflect upon your thoughts knowledge and experience that is a dictionary meaning of idea but how do you ideate how do you generate the thought how do you generate a thought which is diverse how do you generate a thought which is impactful how do you generate a thought that is productive how do you generate a thought that is helps us establish a knowledge society a thinking society a productive society society a proactive society a activist based society three steps first and foremost understand what is the meaning of a ter the term fact since i come from a law background i am quite accustomed to saying this the indian evidence act defines fact as what anything state of things relation of things capable of being perceived by senses so it can be anything it can be state of things it can be relation of things that you want to conceptualize on and think about it this is where step 2 comes into picture step 2 whatever you think interpret 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 brainstorm and come to a common conclusion now step 3 whatever is your interpretation let it pass through the test of your knowledge and let it pass through the test of your experience and in this 21st century how does one become knowledgeable and how does one become well experienced not by becoming first benchers but be, but by becoming last benchers and that is how when you know when your thought when your idea when your interpretation goes through the test of your experience and knowledge it results in wisdom now use this wisdom and give yourself to the test of theses antitheses and syntheses thesis you have an idea convert that idea into vision but before that start with a dream let it be a stupid dream let it be an unrealistic dream let it be an unattainable dream but keep dreaming now once you are done with dreaming do not procrastinate but convert the dream into an idea that idea into a thought that thought into a vision that vision into a goal that goal into an objective and that objective into your day to day passion now once you are done with your share of ideating put yourself to your own interrogation criticize yourself interrogate yourself question yourself 
doubt the idea, think of all the loopholes, think of all the lacunas, think of the failures that you may encounter because of this idea. Let it intimidate you. Let it frighten you. Let it make you feel underconfident about yourself. Now comes the next step. Synthesis. Now become your own cheerleader. Become your own cheerleader by one, encouraging yourself. Looking at various prospects, various ideas, various thoughts, various philosophies, various dogmas, various theories, where you can encourage your own idea, which can support your own view, which can you know promote your own view, which can brand your own view, which can market your own idea. And that is when you become a complete human being. In our law school, we have this activity wherein we take up this case a random case that is happening in the high court or the supreme court or even in the lower courts, we give it to students and we ask them to think about it. Now, why am I telling you this as an example? Do not just keep this as an activity for yourself. Based on the idea, based on the conclusion, based on various findings that you can conclude with, bring that to your society. Bring that to your classroom. Bring that to your friends group. Bring that to your family gatherings. Discuss with your friends. Discuss with your family. Discuss that with your teachers. Discuss that with your mentors. Once you discuss, draw criticism from them, take suggestions from them, ideate with them. As I was telling you, we do this in the law school. I'm sure that you know various engineering colleges and business schools have their own share of ideathons and hackathons and whatnot. Wherein a realistic issue is given to you and you put yourself in the boot of an advocate and you argue the case either as a petitioner or as a respondent. Similarly, give yourself to those practices. You don't have to expect an institution or an organizer to do something of this sort. Sit in the cafeteria and conduct such activities. Sit in your classroom in the free time and conduct such activities. Sit in the playground and conduct such activities. Why am I emphasizing on this? From the words of Socrates, it is for the weak minds to discuss about people. Average minds discuss events and great minds discuss ideas. Let us take this historic land for example. Let us take the example of Adi Shankaracharya who in his 20s traveled not once or twice or thrice, but four times across India, discussing his idea, his philosophy. Take Mahatma Basaveshwara, who invited the entire global diaspora to this place called Anubhava Mantapa, with a vision, with a thought, and with an idea to eliminate social discrimination. So this is where keep dreaming, keep ideating, because that is the power of idea, that is the power of group idea and most importantly that is your path towards establishing a knowledge society. Most importantly, most importantly, why do we need this knowledge society? First and foremost, we need the knowledge society because only ladies and gentlemen in this 21st century, in the next 25 years where you and I will be dictating the terms of the society, where you and I will be holding responsible roles, where you and I will have the larger obligation of carrying the vision of this nation on our lofty soldier, on our lofty shoulders, understand this much. We need a knowledge society because only knowledge can generate wealth. Only knowledge can give us adequate knowledge to protect the wealth that is already generated. Only knowledge can help us be the voice of the marginalized, be the voice of the suppressed, be the voice of the oppressed, and be the voice of the vulnerables. And most importantly, we need a knowledge society so that we gather more knowledge and that knowledge can be imparted to the larger audience. Always remember, and with this I intend to conclude, Knowledge in the wrong hands, knowledge in the crooked hands will be used for arguments. Wealth in the arrogant hands will be used for boosting their ego and power to suppress the voiceless. But knowledge in the hands of the noble people will be used for imparting knowledge. Wealth in the hands of noble people will be used for generosity. And most importantly, power in the hands of noble people will be used to support, uplift and empower the marginalized. With this, thank you very much. Namaskaram.